Hello, how's it going? What we're going to do today is talk about some Bunsen burners and how they work and what they're used for. Okay, so first things first, usually we have something called like a ring stand here and we have a metal base here and you screw this thing in, right? And then you attach this thing here, right? And you can adjust it up or down or like this. And a lot of times we have it in this position because it's more stable like this rather, rather than having it like, let's say in this position like this. Um, sometimes we kind of need to do this, but it's not really recommended because then it'll tip over on you and it's not good. Um, so that's kind of how this stuff works. And then what you have is also like this triangle thing, right? You got some ceramic material here. You got some uh, metal wire to put it on there. It holds this nice thing. A lot of times we use ceramic crucibles. Um, but this right here works good. It's like a ketchup container, okay? It's like really cheap. The stainless steel is not going to melt uh, with the temperatures of this Bunsen burner here very easily. So what we do is put that in there. It lasts a while. The students can go like this. It falls down, doesn't break, okay? Conversely, you take something like this, all right? You, you, you drop this, it's going to bust. Or if you take this while it's really, really hot and you put it on the cold table, that's what happened here. It's going to break in half. I like this as a good example of what could happen here. Um, so we don't want that. That's called thermal shock. And that's because um, these things are, it's, it's thermal expansion or contraction really, really quickly. And it just causes that crack to happen. We don't want that. That's usually not going to happen with something like this, the metal. You can take it while it's really, really hot, obviously not with your fingers. You'd use something like tongs so you don't get third degree burns. And then you take this, you put it on the thing, right? You put it on there and it's good to go. Put it back in here, good to go. So how about we stop talking about that? Let's talk about the Bunsen burner itself. Here's the Bunsen burner. And you'll notice that it's really simple looking, but maybe not so simple um, if we get into the details of it. So what we have is a gas source. So the gas is coming into the school. Um, methane or propane, okay, a lot of times it's methane gas. We call it natural gas, right? And it comes out of this as long as this valve is, is live, it's activated. So I have to like turn a key in the classroom and then it's good to go. So when I do this, I can hear it. I can eventually smell it because they spike it with sulfur compounds so that you don't, for instance, leave the gas on and then at some point blow up your house. That would not be good. So you can smell it, right? Not good. Your nose is very, very sensitive to that sulfur compound. And then also, because natural gas by itself is odorless, you wouldn't be able to, to detect it, that would be not very safe at all. Um, so you can hear it, you can smell it, I can feel it coming out of there, right? It's not gonna hurt me right now, like it's just blowing onto me, right? It's not, it's not a big deal. It smells gross, but it's not the end of the world. So if I let that fill up the room and then I light the match, not good, right? But it's not that much that I just did. So what I'll do is see if I can get this thing to work and then I'll turn the gas on. A lot of times we don't do this, right? but it's not the end of the world. We can do this. And also when we're dealing with things that are hot, we can also wear the gloves, right? We got thermally insulated gloves when we're touching things that are hot, we can do that too. Um, I'm not gonna use those today. We're not gonna need them for what I'm doing here. And, and I don't have my students do this, okay? This is something like, if I saw my students do this stuff, it'd be crazy, like I would probably freak out. Um, but I show them what not to do, right? So this is what's happening here, and you can easily see the gas is coming out, and once we give it a little bit of activation energy, it's able to start that reaction with oxygen in the air. And if we turn it up high enough, you can actually see a gap forming there. That gap is because it needs some time. That natural gas is coming out, it needs some time to mix with the oxygen before it can actually combust. And you might ask yourself, why? Is this flame not going back into the pipes and like blowing up the school or something, right? Isn't that dangerous what I'm doing right now? Well, not really because this is made of metal, so that's not gonna melt very easily, right? Um, so the, yes, this is getting hot right here. Um, and this handle in turn is probably getting hot. This is why we don't usually do what I'm doing right now, okay? Um, but it's not gonna like be the end of the world. And the one couple, couple reasons why it's not gonna go back in there and explode, okay? A couple reasons. One is there's not really any oxygen all right, it needs to get out of here and mix with the oxygen in order to combust. It's a combustion reaction. The other reason is out here, okay, it's very low pressure compared to in there, all right? In here is pretty high pressure, and that's things move from high pressure to low pressure, and so that's why it's coming out of this high pressure environment into the low pressure environment. 
is not going to want to go back into that high pressure environment. It doesn't like it. Um, and then another reason is we have these things called one-way valves, and, and one-way valves only let things go in one direction and not back in. Uh, those are a couple reasons. Now we don't usually do this, right? This is just like if you saw this in a chemistry classroom, a lot of people would just freak out. So we're not going to do that. Usually, what we do very carefully is we take this thing, and so this is just like piping, right? Like you have in your house, and so. In this case, we just need a way to transport that gas. So the gas is going to come out of there. And we're going to transport that gas over here to the Bunsen burner. Um, so a lot of times what we do is we put it on here. But just in case, just to, to prove to you that the gas is being transported through here, um, what we could do is try to light it down here. And it's not, it, it's got a good seal. It's not going to light down there, but we light it here. And now we have like a flamethrower. And, and so obviously it's not going to be good if the students are doing this and like catching themselves on fire. And so obviously if I saw this in the class, I would freak out as well. Um, not going to happen, right? And I show my students what not to do. Um, and so what else is if you put this on here and you don't make the connection um, tight enough, hopefully it would be obvious um, what would happen, but let's just find out. So we're just doing our thing. We're assumed that it, we assume that it's connected. And we got a little flame there, but also we probably have a leak down here. <gasps> oh no, right? Oh no, that's a horrible thing. That's very dangerous. Don't do that, right? We got to make sure that this connection down here is very secure. So we want to kind of pull on that, make sure that's good to go. Make sure this is good to go. The connections are tight. Now the gas is going to be directed all the way into here. What we also don't want to do is use a Bunsen burner that doesn't have one of these, for instance. Um, or if this is really loose and it kind of like falls out or something, or if we just take it out, oh, hey, we don't need this, right? This is like, what is this? This is crazy, we don't need that. We can just do this, right? Uh-oh, oh no. Oh no, everything's on fire again, right? Not good, because the, the, the gas is gonna take the path of least resistance. Why would it go all the way up here when it can just go out there, right? It's not gonna come up here. Why would it do that? So we're not gonna do that, no, no, no. We're gonna take this, we're gonna put it in here. Now, if we close this all the way, if we close that all the way, we turn the gas on. Uh-oh, now the gas is coming through this, but it's stopping here because this is closed. So, no good, right? Now we open this. Now, not all the way, but open it enough. Now we have a situation where, there you go, there's your nice little flame. You can also adjust the amount of oxygen going into that flame, check this out. So you can kind of see the little gap. There's not much of a gap there. This is a pretty cool flame, all right? So it's yellow and that signifies that it's not really burning as hot as it could. All right, so to get more complete, hotter combustion, we're gonna unscrew this a little bit. And so notice how it turning, it's turning blue. And then if the more I unscrew it, you see that inner cone there, right? And so that inner cone we learned is like the blue flame of death. It's like the stuff that's like gonna melt the metal, right? And so what we have is a situation where we can actually kind of adjust the flame temperature by just adjusting the amount of oxygen going to the flame. And it's getting, if you see the little gap there, there's a gap down here. And as I unscrew it, it's allowing more oxygen to mix in here. And it's allowing for more complete, hotter combustion up here. And so also the heat is going on up here, so it, it doesn't really get too hot right here, at least right away, so I can, I can do this safely, okay? I'm not burning my hands right now by touching this. Um, so let's just, for our purposes, let's just screw it all the way down, all right? I don't need like that hot blue flame. I, like, I think this one's a little easier to see, so we'll do like this for now. The other thing you don't wanna do is, you gotta make sure there's no kinks in your, in your tubing, all right? So this is what happens commonly. Check this out, so we got a situation like this. Now, look at how kinked this is, all right? So let's say you got your lab partner. Your lab, you're like this, and, and you're like, okay, um, hey, buddy, you're gonna light this for me, all right? And then they light it, and then, you're, then, then your person lets go. Watch this, all right? No, oh no, now we gotta turn it off, because now it just caught the school on fire. Oh, bad, right? So check this out, I'll do it without the flame. That's not any good, right? So you can't make, you gotta make sure there's no kinks in this, right? This is so grossly common sense, hopefully. Now we take this, now we're good, we make sure this is good, make sure that's good, I think we're good to go. And now it's time for seeing if we can explain something which is really cool. So we're gonna take this, turn the gas on, good to go. Here we go. Last but not least, we're going to turn the flame off, okay? Turn the gas off all the way. 
Then we're going to turn the flame back on, and it comes back. Look at that. We're going to turn it off, and then I'm going to magically get that flame coming back. Very, very interesting. So hopefully you enjoyed. Science is cool. Science is cool, except when you have heat, which is left unattended, and you walk away, and then it catches the school on fire. Not good. So don't do what I did. Turn that off, then walk away. Now it's cool. <laughs>